Welcome back. So in this session, we're going to cover homogeneous constant coefficient equations for any roots. So we're told to assume that z of t is equal to exponential minus 3t times cosine plus i of sine t. And to assume that this complex number is the solution to this differential equation, which is second order with constant coefficients m, b, and k, which are real. And to, from this assumption, give two real solutions to this equation. In the second part, we're asked to find a general solution for this other differential equation, which is the same form as that seen in part A, with now real values for b equals to 6, m equals to 1, and k equals to 10. And then we're asked if this system that would be captured by this differential equation is overdamped or underdamped. In the last part, we switch gear and we're given a series of roots, eight roots, to an eighth degree polynomial, and we're asked to write down the general solution for that polynomial. Note that here we have repeated roots, which is basically where the trick is. So why don't you take a few minutes and we'll come back to solve these problems. Welcome back. So, for the first part, we're given a complex number, clearly split into its real part and its imaginary part. So this is imaginary part of z, and this is real part of z. Now, the differential equation that we are given is constant value differential equation of second order, linear, and homogeneous, so there is no right-hand side. So clearly you can see that if a complex number that can be written as real part plus i imaginary part is solution to this equation, then both sides independently are also solutions to this equation. So by, by giving us this complex number, we are actually given two type of solutions that we can then write down as two linearly independent solutions. So the general solution to this differential e equation can then be written in the form of one co constant coefficient that is undetermined, minus 3t cos t, plus another constant coefficient, minus 3t sine of t where basically we're introducing a linear combination of two linearly independent solutions that were just taken from the original complex number we were given. So, for the second part now, we're asked to find a general solution for the ODE. I will just rewrite here for now. So again, constant coefficient, homogeneous equation and we're just asked to find the general solution. So we learned from the class notes that we can use the characteristic polynomial method to solve this equation. And the characteristic polynomial here will have this form. And basically we just need to find the roots of this characteristic polynomial to be able then to express the solutions of this homogeneous constant coefficient equation in terms of in terms of function exponential to whatever roots we will find, okay? So I just want to write down the discriminant of this, of this polynomial. So uh, what do we have here? Or what, what was the question again? Find the general solution? Blah, blah. Yeah. So we're asked then to just find the discriminant for this equation. So b squared minus 4t, which is basically minus 4. So we have a discriminant that is negative, okay? And the roots for our polynomial here is just going to be the root absolute value of the, of the discriminant with the, exponent with the complex uh, number i out because we had a negative discriminant. So this, this uh, couple of solutions, plus or minus, tells us that we're going to have oscillations as solutions for this differential equation. 
and that it's also going to be actually damped oscillations because we have a first the real part of the number being negative. So let me just write down the the the, the solution uh, the, the pair of solution that we would have. We would have this that comes out of the real part cosine or co root of, of four is just two. And so we have cosine t, that's one. And six over two, of course, is just three. Yep. So here I switch directly to writing down in cosine and sine in the, in the forms, but we could also have kept it in the complex form if we were solving the equation in complex space, and then we would just have complex exponentials here with the frequencies omega, angular frequency one. So this is the homogeneous equation, the homogeneous solution for this homogeneous constant coefficient differential equation. But what do we see? we can see that it's exactly the same form that the solution that we had previously, right? And so the question here is this oscillator overdamped or underdamped? And as we see here, we're going to have oscillations that are damped by a, by a prefactor of decaying exponential minus 3t for both cases. So this is decaying, so there is differently damping, and we can see that here because we had a positive value for b, which is the damping term in the in the oscillator system, but there, is, there are still oscillations because we had a discriminant that was negative which introduces complex numbers, hence cosines and sines, so basically oscillations. Therefore, we are in the case of an underdamped response, uh, an underdamped system. Discriminant was negative. So for the last part, of this problem, we now leave this differential equation, which was second order, and move to higher order differential equations of eighth order. And we're given eight roots. Four minus five i. We have the root 3, which is real, which is repeated three times, and the root 4 plus or minus 5i, which is repeated two times. So we saw before then when we have repeated roots, that means that we would have, let's say, in a, a second order differential equation, we would have, in this case, a discriminant that would be equal to 0, and we would need to introduce an, a different type of solutions, because instead of introducing an exponential of plus RT exponential minus RT. Now we don't have the minus RT, so we need to seek another type solution and we we'll multiply the exponential by T. So one type of solution for this unique root that would come out would be just 2T. For the first of the tripled root, it would be a 3T. For the second one, we would have a T3T. For the third one, we need to go higher order, 3T. Now we have complex roots, so that gives us solutions of the same form that we found in questions A and B. So I'm going to just, going to just write them here, where now we have E 4t cosine 5t plus E 4t sine 5t. And for the repeated root, is the same game. Even though we're in complex roots, it's the same idea. We need to multiply all of it by t. So these are the families of linearly independent roots that would come out, or uh, linear independent solutions that would come out of these roots. So now the general solution is simply the linear combination of all these linearly independent functions. So we will introduce different constants. T 
see five, see six, see seven, and see eight. And we have eight indeterminate coefficient to, to, uh, to deal with because these would be eight roots of an eighth order polynomial. And so if we were to solve an initial value problem like that, we would need eight different types of initial conditions to determine the values of these constants. So to summarize, we use the characteristic polynomial method to solve these, these problems in, introducing uh, higher order equations than the first order uh, differential equations we saw before. And what is important to remember is the, the different type of solutions that you get depending on the roots of the characteristic polynomial and the sign of the discriminant. So whether the roots are real or purely imaginary or imaginary number will give three types of the behavior. The critically damped behavior, if it's real then it's going to be just over damped behavior and if the roots are complex then it will be under damped behavior. Now when we are given different type of roots with repeated roots it's important to know how to construct the solutions as well and that's by introducing new types of function where we're multiplying by polynomial in power in polynomial in t in front of the exponential. So that ends the session for today. <laughs>